building. Tower of Pizza. Just a couple of uh, little things to explain why I'm building this up. Um, on the, um, on um, Wednesday this week, uh, I went to the uh, eye specialist, and as you know, I've been getting injections in the eye for wet macular degeneration. He did a scan this week and said, so far, it's improving. The bleeding behind the eye is drying up. That stopped, and the fluid is drying up. So he said, main thing is we've stopped you going blind. And so that's the main thing. So one of the reasons we can thank God for. But I'm saying that in respect that uh, today you'll need to just bear with me a little bit as we um, seek to. Um, be able to understand what I've printed down in front of me. <laughs> that's okay. If you find it a little bit um, jumbled at times, just that be a little bit forgiving. But today I'm going to be talking about a sudden coming. Greg Laurie said that America has a Bible nearly in every home. But not many of those who own a Bible could tell you the four Gospels. Those who have their Bible, many of them could not even name one of the Ten Commandments. I don't, I don't know, but I just find this incredible. But it even gets worse, because out of 20 people interviewed, 10 said that Moses was one of Jesus' apostles. 12% thought that Joan of Arc was Noah's wife. <laughs> oh, I suppose that's fair enough, isn't it? 50% of high school students thought that Sodom and Gomorrah were husband and wife. So, it's not a matter of having words in a book at home that you can read, but you need to understand it. You need to be able to comprehend what you're reading. We're going to take our reading this morning from Luke 2, 8 to 15, and I'm going to ask Coral to bring that to us now. Thank you, Coral. Today's reading comes from The Shepherds and the Angels, from Luke 2, verses 8 to 15. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news, great joy, that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, the Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. There will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Thanks, Carl. Remember, my theme is a sudden coming. 
I guess I don't know too many of you who might say that I didn't know it's getting close to Christmas. I guess if you did say that, you must have been hiding under a rock or, or in a dis distant land somewhere. Because there's no escaping the fact, is there, that we're approaching Christmas. We've been bombarded through television, through everything that's available for printed media or radio, television, whatever. We're being told we're approaching Christmas. It wasn't always that way. I can remember 60 years ago, 50 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> that Christmas was a fun time because it was a time to go and look at the shops. And we would get in the car and go into the valley and walk around and look at the shop windows. This is pre-TV, don't forget. And all the shop windows had dioramas and beautiful scenes and it was wonderful, things moved and sounded and bells rang and music was playing and it was beautiful. So once you did the valley, then you walked up to town and went up to Queen Street and had a look at all the wonderful things there then. That was simpler. But we knew it was Christmas because it was really special and we didn't need it bombarded through every avenue of the media to let us know. It was something we had to do. But you know, all through history, man has searched for a higher being. Man has searched for a deity. Man has been looking for that higher being that he could worship and praise. And always that was the case. It was unattainable, it was unreachable. He had to search for it. He had to do all these exercises. He had to do these things to attain a closeness to reach. He either had to ring cymbals, bells, drums, or whatever it was he needed to do to reach his deity. But now, there is a new faith coming to the earth. And it's, revi it's reversing everything that went on before. Whereas man was reaching up to his God, God now is coming near. God is coming down. He's coming down to man. The Creator of the universe. He has come. He has come and we don't have to do any of those exercises that man was conflicted with before. But was this coming signaled? Yes, it was. Because we read in one of the prophets who wrote in the Old Testament, Isaiah, in Isaiah 7 verse 14, because it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. And behold, a virgin will conceive and bear his son and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And in Malachi 5 verse 1 we read, The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come. So it should be no surprise that there was this sudden invasion from heaven. And so scripture has informed us. But when these things do happen, it can be a surprise. And what happens when God suddenly appears? When God suddenly appears through scripture, we see wonderful things happening. You only have to ask Paul as he walked and trudged along that road to Damascus. When God suddenly appeared, what happened to him? <laughs> Certainly turned his life around. And 
as Michael shared with us a couple of weeks ago from Acts 22, um, the story of Paul and Silas in prison. Here we find them, as the word says, severely flogged. No doubt the um, people inflicting that punishment have made sure that they felt it. Put into chains, manacled, thrown into the deepest part of the prison. And so we find two parts in this story, man's part. And what did man do? Paul and Silas. Well, they didn't sat there and rub their wounds and felt sorry for themselves. It wasn't the case at all, was it? No. They decided to have a praise and worship time. And they did, singing praises and thankfulness to God. And God heard their cries and their, and their praise and worship, and he said an earthquake. Of course, you know the story, freeing the, the black box fell off and doors were opened and freedom was available for everyone and Paul called out to the jail and to him himself and his response was what shall I do to be saved? What can I do to be saved? There's wonderful things that happen in the sudden coming of the Lord. We only have to read through the Testaments, as we read the story of the tax collector, as Michael shared with us a few weeks ago, what happened to him in the sudden coming of Jesus into his life? The lepers, those who were deaf, those who were blind, the lame, the dead, the woman caught in adultery, people caught in compromising situations, people with with very um, dark pasts, but suddenly into their lives comes this refreshing new story which changed them. There's the power of God coming into their lives. When we look at the story that Carl read to us, it has some wonderful features which perhaps we need to just look at a little bit closer. So, as we do that, I just wonder if we could just, if you could put that up again. For me, Kim, please, that reading from Luke. Thank you. It says a few things there that my mind was questioning. You know, it says that the shepherds were out there dozily looking after their sheep and just an, an ordinary sort of night. But, you know, was that night any different from... Any other night? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it was available. Michael, again. Michael, I must have been listening to you lately. Well, well, no, I mean, that's very good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when Michael was talking about Moses and the burning bush, and remember, when Moses approached that burning bush, was that burning bush or was that bush any different from any other bush? Was it a special bush? It was called the God speaking bush? <laughs> I don't think so. Because it was any old bush. Any old bush would do for God to use. And what was the key? It was available for God. Does that apply to you and me? Of course it does. Are you available for God to use? And God will use you. And this night was no different. This night was no different. And on this night, these shepherds were there looking after their sheep. And the word says, suddenly an angel appeared. Now, 
I don't know how you would have felt at that moment. But I know I would have been scared. I would have been frightened. I mean, let's face it. In that time, 4 or 5 AD, was it? Or BC? Correct me there, they used to call us. Would have been 4 or 5 BC, wouldn't it? They wouldn't have been used to fireworks display the, the flashing of, of neon lights or fireworks. The Chinese knew how fireworks worked, but it wasn't too often in the Middle East that they had too many to play with. Not, not hear mention of too many Catherine wheels to be viewed. So therefore something like this for those shepherds must have really startled them. Particularly when they started talking. This angel started talking and telling him what was about to happen. Telling the shepherds what a wonderful thing was about to be done amongst them. But not only that, but not only that, God's whole panoply of angels were about to come upon them. Because it says that the armies of angels came down and joined. Can you now imagine it? Not only was there one angel, but there are armies of angels and it said that the glory of God shone around. There was a reading about that in Exodus 3. And... Uh, Do we have that reading from Exodus? Thank you. And here, the reading is of the story of Moses. And Moses wanted to see God, and you know the story, God did not allow him to see his face, but he said, if you hide in this cleft of the rock, then my glory will pass you by, and you can see the, the rear of me as I go by. But his glory was so great that Moses was blinded for days and his, his whole attitude changed from that moment. And here we, we find the story where it says that the glory of God was evident on the ground to these shepherds. Can you imagine what it must have been like for them to see all this happening in front of them? How they must have been awestruck and in wonder. And I often wonder why shepherds were chosen. Because shepherds didn't have a very high standing at that time. Shepherds were not allowed to be in court as witnesses because they weren't uh, judged as reliable. And so God has reversed that. God reversed that because who were they to go and see? Who was to go and see and worship the newborn babe? The shepherds. And who was to tell those around them of the good news, of the joy of what was happening? The shepherds. Those who are not even qualified to be in the court of the time. You know, it's important to be there, to be available for God to use. And God used these humble men to do His bidding and to do what He wanted. I had already written that some weeks and weeks, well, some months ago actually. And then I picked up a book by Max Licata and it's called A Heavenly Moment. Obviously, some of us were in sync with what we were thinking at the time. Not that I'm comparing myself with Max Licata, for, for better, but uh, he also went along with a similar thought. And I'll just read a little bit 
from what he was saying. He says, just a moment. As moments go, so that one was appeared no different from any other. If you could somehow pick up off the timeline, it would look exactly like the one that had gone on before. And he's speaking about that night that the shepherds hear the angels announcing the birth of Jesus. That it would be the same as the one that had passed. It was one of those countless moments that have marked time forever. But through that moment of time, a spectacular thing occurred. God became a man. God became a man. While we creatures on the earth walked unaware that divinity had arrived. The one moment the one moment and in that instant he made the omnipotent made himself breakable. It was he who was larger than the universe became an embryo and whose very sustenance, he who sustained the world was now sustained by a very young girl. The creator of the universe was being created. God came near. He came not as a flash of light or as an unapproachable unapproachable conqueror but as one whose cries were heard by a peasant girl and a sleepy carpenter. The hands that held him were not manicured but were callous and dirty. And for 30 years he would feel everything that you and I feel. He said to those prophets of long ago to write these words for unto us the child was born to unto us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God and Prince of Peace. The angel said, we bring you good news. Yeah. Good news? Yes. You're going to have a saviour. He's going to be a judge. He's going to be a warrior. He's going to be a king. That's who is coming. This is the good news. But a baby, a baby, peace I bring to you, peace 
we've enjoyed the Pax Romana, the Roman peace since 27 BC. We understand what peace is. We haven't had any wars. You know, isn't it funny how sometimes people really don't get it? The peace that the angels were talking about were not the peace that surrounds them. It's the peace that comes from the knowledge that someone loves you and is willing to die for you so that you can have peace and contentment and security forever. And that's what the angels were saying. We have this message of hope. We have this message of peace and love and freedom which you've never experienced before. And we want you to enjoy that right now. And as he says to them, enjoy the peace and worship him and give him praise and honour. And it says that the shepherds got up and went and worshipped the baby. These men, ignorant, probably peasants, not being trained in any university or school, but they knew enough to know that what they heard was the truth and obeyed it. Yes, peace had come. Peace had come not in the way in which most people were expecting, but in the way that God had planned for each of them. Father, I thank you that what you have visited upon us was a measure of the peace, contentment, and the joy that can only come through a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have brought to us. Thank you, Father, for your sudden coming amongst us. You've done that in the lives of me. You have done that in the lives of those here today who have wanted you and accepted you. You have done that because you loved us. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that we can now enjoy the fruits of that relationship with you. In Jesus' name. Amen.